Hello everyone. A little while back I added new lighting to my workshop and it's been really great but I don't really like the way that it's controlled. For each one of the lights or each one of the rows I have one of these hooked up. So the shop is really divided into two sides. I've got kind of this side and that side and I have a total of four rows split down the middle in that side and this side. So in essence I have eight of these that are individually controlled with these two remotes. So I can turn off these lights individually and then turn them back on individually. However, when I come out here to work, if I just want to turn everything on, I've got to sit there and hit, you know, eight different buttons to get the lights on. Or if I want to have like half of the room on and half the room off, I have to go through and, you know, set basically each one of the lights individually. So what I want to do is actually use an Arduino Pro Mini and one of these really inexpensive RF transmitter receiver combos that you can get um, on Amazon or eBay jam all that together into a little um, handheld enclosure and make my own shop light controller that I can do presets and I can turn everything on and everything off and I can control it exactly the way I want. The first thing I need to do is take the commands that are sent from the remote control and learn them or read them into the Arduino so that I can then send them out again. It's much like creating a universal remote control where you need to learn the commands into the remote before you can relay it out. So I need to make a little setup with an Arduino and the um, receiver that comes with this little combo to receive and record the commands from the remote controls. Here is my little test setup. I've got an Arduino Uno, I have the receive module, and I have the send module. There's a lot of wires sitting in here, but let me explain exactly what's going on. You have your send and your receive modules that you get with this little kit, and each one of these has three pins that we care about. There's a ground pin, there's the voltage pin, and there's a data pin. There's actually four pins on the receiver and only three pins on the send module, but we really only care about these three pins. And this one's voltage, ground, and data is in the middle. So each one of these I have connected into a common ground that goes back with this green wire to the Arduino. And then the data pin for the receive unit goes to pin two. And then for the send unit, the data pin goes to pin 10. I also have a couple of buttons labeled down here off and on. And I've set these up to where the off just turns off everything and the on turns on everything. More on that later. But for right now, this little setup will allow us to read in the commands for the remotes and then we can program the Arduino to then send them out through the send module. So let's see what the code looks like. For the code, I'm using this RC switch library. The first thing you need to do is go ahead and download this and install it in your Arduino IDE. And then once you get that installed, we're just going to go down to examples, RC switch, and then I'm going to select the receiver demo advanced. The advanced is important because it has a couple things that we need from it. So just go ahead and load the advanced and it looks a little something like this. Notice down here that we've got the my switch enable receive on zero, which is interrupt zero, which means pin two. So that means that your data pin on the receiver needs to be connected into pin two. The first thing you need to do is just go ahead and upload that to your Arduino. And then once that's done, just open the serial monitor. From here, you just need to press the buttons on your remote. So I'm gonna press on, and then there is a value. So if I keep pressing different buttons, you can see different values pop up here in the terminal. Now keep in mind on your remote, both the on and off commands each have their own separate command or separate um, code to it. So what you wanna do is, I'm paying attention to the binary here. You could use decimal, you could use the tri-state. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just caring about the binary for you know an arbitrary reason. The other thing you need to pay attention to is your pulse length. My pulse length is 182. That is not the default so that is in the code. So if you just use the default code and try and plug, plug in your binary commands, it won't work. You need to change the pulse length. So go ahead and write this down and then maybe open up a Google Doc or open up Notepad or whatever and take note of the binary command for both the on and off for everything on your remote controls. Okay, now I have everything recorded in a spreadsheet here. I basically have, like I said, two sides of the room, the left side and the right side. So I have all the on commands and all the off commands for both of these remote controls. 
So we're going to go back into Arduino IDE and from the examples, select the RC switch, send demo. And that's what this one looks like. Remember before how I said pay attention to the pulse length, you can see that the default here is 320. So we need to remove these comments and then change this to the pulse length of whatever your um, remote is. Mine was 182. So now that I have that set, I can go back in my document and say, okay, this command was on for the first row of lights on the left-hand side. So I can copy this down into the binary command right down here and just simply copy that in, upload this, and the Arduino will then send a command for that. It's that simple. And keep in mind that this is connected to pin 10. You can change this to pretty much whatever pin you want. So scanning ahead a little bit, if I go to some code here, this is the code that I currently have loaded on the Arduino. I actually start a um, serial terminal, um, pin mode seven and eight, these are the um, buttons that I have for on and off. I don't have them labeled because I'm lazy. Um, pin 10 is for the transmit. Set the pulse length, 182. And if we go down here to the loop, it simply does a digital read for the um, on and off. If the on is hit, that's apparently seven, then it does on. And this is all my on commands for all eight lights or eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have a delay time set in between each of them, which is a universal. I found out that one millisecond is perfectly fine. So I'm just using a um, one millisecond as my delay time. And then I have the off, which basically does the off command for everything. So it's pretty simple. I'm gonna change this up a little bit to do presets and some other things, but this is really the basics of the code right here. Okay, now it's time to test everything out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the off since the lights are currently on. And that turned everything off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit on. So that is working. Next step is to condense all this down and put it inside the enclosure. Here is the enclosure I'm using. This is a soft case from OKW Enclosures. I've used these before. I use this on my login Geiger counter and they're pretty nice. And inside you can see that we've got a nine volt battery holder in the back. So I'll be using a nine volt for the power. I'm gonna be running the Pro Mini in a low power mode and I estimate I should get like six months to a year out of a nine volt so I can just swap nine volts every six months. Um, I'm gonna use a rechargeable nine volt and I have a nine volt charger against the wall. So that's kind of how everything's gonna work. I'm just gonna set the you know, transmitter somewhere inside here like that. The Pro Mini is just kind of gonna go in the bottom. And I've got four buttons. I um, really like these kind of um, big colored hat buttons. I'm gonna have one for all off one for all on, and then these two will cycle through presets. So in the code, I'm just gonna have a bunch of presets and this will just kind of cycle through all the various different settings. So I could have like four presets, five presets, whatever, and each one of these will fully reset all of the lights so that it doesn't really matter if the lights are on or off, it will just go ahead and send commands to all eight lights. And I kind of did a mock-up with the laser cutter and a piece of ABS. This is what the PCB will look like, and it'll sit something like that. So the caps will just poke through the top of the enclosure over here on this side, and then I'll have some lettering and labeling on that side. So let me get the um, PCB cut and um, set up and get the buttons on there and then get everything wired up in this circuit. For the PCB, I'm using one of these snappable proto boards that I got from SparkFun Electronics. It's a 0.1 inch spaced PCB, but they have a V-score down all the lines so you can kind of, you know, snap it apart and snap it to the size that you need. So that actually turned out to be pretty easy. It's a little bit flexible and I'm going to need to do something to, you know, make it a little bit more rigid, but overall it worked out pretty well. Once I got the PCB snapped to size, I just needed to drill a couple mounting holes in it so that it would mount inside the enclosure. And then I just populated the buttons and started wiring everything up. The wiring was a little bit messy on this. I decided to just hardwire everything directly into the Pro Mini. And for the actual transmitter module, I did utilize the headers and I just used some jumpers that I plugged into the end of it, cut off the other ends and wired that directly into the Pro Mini. I really wasn't gonna be opening this up a lot, so I didn't really care if it had wiring harnesses or anything fancy like that. 
Here's what it looks like all wired up. I've got the four buttons on top. I've got the PCB anchored into the enclosure right there. The um, transmitter is just kind of floating here, and you can kind of see that they have the antenna wire tucked all around the outside of the case. So it gives me a little bit longer of an antenna wire just by wrapping it around the case. And I'll show you what I did on the underneath side here. So on the underneath side, I have the Pro Mini just heat shrunk um, right there for two reasons. One, just to um, add a little bit of strain relief for the wire so they don't get bent too much. And secondly, just to protect anything from shorting. So this actually worked out pretty well, just putting some heat shrink around it. And I still have the headers exposed over here, so programming it is pretty easy still. And for the battery, I just have one of these um, JST connectors that I can plug and plug in if for whatever reason I want to remove this easily I can just unplug it right there and um, yeah so now it's time to start working on the rest of the enclosure I put the enclosure on the CNC machine to cut out an opening for the top so that the buttons could stick through and I'll end up putting a face plate over top of this whole thing The next step was to make the actual faceplate. I bought these um, thin pieces of aluminum off of eBay. I think they're 40,000th inch thick and they're pre-anodized black, so I don't have to do any finishing work with them. I put those on the CNC mill. This is my first time using double stick tape. It's actually carpet tape to hold it down and it actually worked out well. I have a whole separate video that goes into how I made the faceplate and um, the modifications of the enclosure, so be sure to check that out. But after that was machined, then I just kind of did a test fit, brought over to the drill press, drilled out the holes so that it fit nicely onto the enclosure. And then I took the face plate, brought it over to the laser cutter, and actually used that to engrave the lettering and labeling on the face plate. So here is what it looks like all put together. The laser engraving didn't come out as um, much contrast as I'd want it to, but that's okay. And um, I also didn't have any black screws, so I had to take some silver screws and spray paint them because they just stuck out too much. So this is what it looks like. The last thing I was wanting to do is open this up and um, I have a little connector that I can put in line with the battery and I can measure the current draw. So I just wanted to see what this draws while running. So let's put a meter in there and measure it. So I have the power connected in through my multimeter. I've got it set to milliamps right here, and we're sitting around 0.1 or 0.09. And if I go over to microamps over here, you can see, yeah, same thing, about 100 microamps, something like that. So this is just on, this isn't transmitting, this isn't doing anything. So if I go ahead and hit the all on command, you can see it jumps to about seven and a half milliamps, something like that, and then the off just to prove it's working. There we go. So the battery I'm um, using is a 600 milliamp hour nine volt battery. So if I take six, divide it by 0.1, I get 6,000. So that's 6,000 hours. If I divide 6,000 by 24, I get 250. So in theory, this will last 250 days or just, just over six months. And that, really isn't um, calculating in the transmitting back and forth. However, you know, in the scheme of things, that's only like a couple seconds here and there in that lifespan of the 6,000. So it should last about six months. I'm pretty happy with that. So here is the shop light controller, all finished and functional. I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. I now have a way to easily control all the lights out in the shop. Another thing I didn't mention about this enclosure is it has this little um, handy belt clip on the back that also doubles as a wall mount. There's this little piece that you attach to your wall and it kind of slides in like a little cradle. And so I'll have this, as soon as you walk into the shop, I'll have this mounted on the wall. But if I ever want to carry it somewhere else, I can just pluck it right off from the wall and carry it anywhere else in the shop. So that's pretty cool. I'm really digging these enclosures. With a few simple modifications, you can make them look really nice. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the low power mode on the Arduino Pro Mini. 
I'm using a 3.3 volt 8 megahertz Pro Mini, which is the lower power one, but I also am using the low power library. I didn't really go into that that much because I'm not really that familiar with it and I don't really understand how it works. I messed around with it a little bit and I couldn't, I couldn't get it exactly the way I want it. Theoretically, this should have about one-tenth the power consumption that it has if I fully implemented that low power library. I'm just doing the basic implementation. Another thing that I did is I cut the trace on the LED for the Pro Mini, so there's no LED on this right now, and the LED uses a couple milliamps. So by deleting that and running the low power, that's how I'm getting the low power out of this. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, post down in the comments. And uh, if you like my videos, please check me out on Facebook, subscribe to my channel, and also check me out on Patreon. Thanks for watching.